Hello there. Now, people haven't quite cottoned on yet that the BBC has painted itself into the corner of attracting attack from both the left and the right. The BBC is in a pickle, but so is Gary Lineker and the lefty lovies who are now supporting him. But those on the centre-right should be smiling from ear to ear, even wider than Lineker's smug grin. So Gary Lineker attracts some flack for claiming that the UK government is using language about irregular migrants that is redolent of 1930s Germany. And the BBC sports commentator thus puts the impartial organisation that pays his wages in a difficult position. So they have a word with him and it's decided that he should not go back on air until they've agreed on the scope of Lineker's social media freedoms. And out come some of Lineker's BBC colleagues to support him, all saying they won't appear on their sports programmes either, forcing the Beeb to cancel some of them. And match of the day could end up as a pundit-free zone this evening. Now, I disagree with Gary Lefty Lineker on most things, but would not want to see him silenced. But not for high-minded ideals about free expression, though. No, just because every time he spouts off about his political views, he's congratulated by a few self-satisfied open border types. But he also reinforces in the minds of the rest of us the need to properly control our borders. And the fact the BBC has pushed him aside for the moment shows that their top brass realises which side of the argument has the most support. Anyway, if you recall, the right of centre political movement has always taken issue with the BBC over its left-leaning, unbiased reporting and the way that things like the Question Time audiences and panels almost always seem to end up being politically somewhat to the left of 1930s Russia. Ooh, that'll get the hackles up. Anyway, as a result of many people feeling miffed at paying for their own left-wing indoctrination, the BBC saw its funds hemorrhage as people cancelled their licence fee, so forcing the Beeb to get rid of free licences for the elderly, something that did them no favours at all. And don't forget the statue that I still think proudly adorns the front entrance to one of their London buildings. So those on the right are not happy with Auntie Beeb, and we've seen nothing to change our view that it is basically an anti-UK, pro-EU, pro-open borders type of setup. So the fact that there's now a fight brewing between the lefty lovies it employs and the BBC management should be welcome news. Because how many viewers on the left will now question why they should pay for a BBC licence that does not push their views as it has traditionally done? Well, in recent years anyway. Now, one question to ask is, do those that are now coalescing around Lefty Lineker do so in support of his right to free speech, or are they doing it because they agree with his politics? Well, at least one of them has come out in support of his politics, so it might apply to them all. And if that's the case, and they publicly support his politics, it might mean that the BBC has to take action against them too. And then those presenters might be tempted to make threats to leave the BBC, under the mistaken impression that their woke social media bubble reflects the wider social attitude on this issue. And the BBC could then sideline them permanently, one supposes. And guess what? Most of them would be forgotten within a month, and the rest within two. Because the whole of the sports world does not revolve around Lineker and co. And there are probably many people out there who could make as good, if not a better job of it, without getting the BBC into political hot water, while not costing the BBC licence fee payers an arm and a leg. So the BBC has a decision to make. Hang on to those presenters and hope it soon blows over and the likes of Lineker won't continue to embarrass them.
or shift the self-important troublemakers out. Now, one way of starting to impose impartiality is to stop this practice of hiring freelancers and get them fully on the employment books, whatever the tax repercussions for those presenters. That way, there's a standard contract, and if some of them don't like it, they should be brave. They shouldn't agree to sign the contract and then go and do their own thing, just like Mark Stein did with GB News and he was recovering from a heart attack. Now, Richard has something to say on the BBC, but before that, let's turn to that other lefty, the Labour Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Now, writing in The Telegraph, Mick Brown appears to have done a bit of a public relations piece on Khan, almost a gooey, sycophantic election-style piece. Talking about how clever and nice Khan is, etc., Anyway, Brown met the London mayor, and one of the topics that was understandably raised was the issue of the ULES expansion plans. And this is where Khan went into defence mode. And Khan's defence was to say that the ULES policy wasn't his idea. No, it was a Boris Johnson policy from 2013, and all Sadiq did was to make it happen. It's all Boris's fault. And Khan's now expanding that policy further. Now, the reason I mention this is because it shows that the Tories are really just as net zero as Labour. And if a Labour or Tory candidate becomes mayor next year, then they will not be reversing that ULES scheme any time soon. And it probably also explains the mad rush by our political classes on both sides to set up powerful devolved mayoralties across the UK. Give them the power and net zero funding and watch them go. And Labour's plans written by Gordon Brown are that on steroids. Be careful what you vote for. Richard. What's that I can smell? Ah, yes, it's the smell of unadulterated sanctimony emanating from within the bowels of the BBC. Yes, the Twitter pages of the soon-to-be unemployed soy latte guzzling presenters and other woke BBC employees, those pages will soon be filled with virtue signalling, virtue signalling on steroids. Uh, We love you, Gary. We stand by you, Gary. We will sacrifice our jobs for you, Gary, because someone somewhere else will give us a job. Straight away, yes, we don't have to worry about being unemployed. Right, I'm off to Netflix or Apple TV just as soon as they stop hemorrhaging viewers. Oh, wait, they don't look very secure either. We love you, Gary, Um, for now. The tears of virtue-signalling liberal lefty woke types at the BBC will soon turn to, well, yeah, more tears, as they find out the hard way that if you go woke, you go broke. This really could spell the end of the BBC. And if they don't unwoke themselves, I think the same will go for Netflix, uh, Amazon and the rest of them. And the sooner the better. Because as I have said before, there are some incredibly, amazingly talented people working in film and television who are creatively gagged by the systemic wokeness within the industry. And I look forward very much to the day those those beasts are unrestrained and let loose. Yes, and then we see television programmes and films that, that are made to represent the values of those that watch them. I want to watch a film about a strong white male character who is hung like a racehorse. Anyway, do you lot support Gary, or are you looking forward to the demise of the BBC and the woke infestation of the film and television industry? Ugh. Have a chat about it yourselves in the comment section below, and we will see you tomorrow at roughly 5.45, where you can get your daily dose of Jeff and I.